and this is something that I've seen with my sort of own eyes, okay, I've, I've heard it with my own ears. Now, we were in a madrasa in Nottingham, in, a, in Flintham, in Newark, Newark. This was in the 90s, when a madrasa, and I think, I'm, I'm sure if you sit with Molana here, he's going to have some plenty of jinn stories from his madrasa, and every other person that's been to some of these madaris, they've got some kind of jinn stories to tell you. Well, this one I, I witnessed, you know, myself. We, we were in a, we came, and we, we came to a building that was, an old RAF building, old RAF building that had been deserted for 20 years. So we were now going, coming into this and we were going to start using this as a madrasa. Now when we came there, one of our teachers, Mawla Fadr Rahim, and he's still alive, he said to us, he said, because we, we started off living in one corner and we we're going to slowly start using the rooms the other side of the monster. Now this place had 120 rooms. Yeah. And it had about three different halls and massive. We had an east wing, a west wing, a middle sort of plot part. And we were in the east wing and we were just staying just in a few rooms. We we're talking about literally about seven or eight rooms. And um for the Rensam and other teachers said they said don't go to the west side. To the west side of the building. I'm telling you we, you know, you, you know, as young people, you dare yourselves, right? Yeah, so we said, come on, let's dare to go over there, right? So we were young, and we, we went into the west side in broad daylight, 12 o'clock. I'm telling you, it was spooky at 12 o'clock, forget 12 in the night. We were walking, and we were, we were holding our arms, and we were, we were walking together, about a good seven or eight of us. As we're walking, we can hear doors banging, bang, bang, creaking, things opening, you know, we just, just, just run. We were saying, you know, our kalim is loudly, shahad is loudly, what about that loudly, Allahu la ilaha illa wa la we basically we're running, yeah? Now, you can imagine, this place was really spooked up. And the teachers warned us, you know, don't go over there. Now, what happened is one of these, um, one of these sort of uh, days. Now there's this young kid, I'm not going to give you his name, he's probably grown up now, he's probably got kids now, all right? so I don't want to embarrass him when he, you know, some of you might confront him. But he was a, he was from up north, from sort of from here, he was up north, and he, um, he was a kid, about 13 years old I'd say, from Bangladesh. He didn't know a word of English, forget anything else, all right? He just knew Bengali, and he was the most quietest kid you can imagine. Just quiet, just sticks to himself and that's it. And he's trying to become a hafiz of the Qur'an and he only has done one juz. He's only done one juz. So one day what happens is that he sort of strays off. I don't know, he goes over to the other side and he comes back. And no one sort of takes much notice of it, but he comes back and the evening when we were all sitting together and we're sort of reading. Uh, I, wasn't in the hall, I wasn't there in the hall at that time, but there were others who said that. But then I went over to the hall to verify this. So this is something that I have verified myself. What happened is that um, he came with his Qur'an up to his teacher. You can imagine a kid who's lallu pattu, who doesn't know a thing, single thing. Yeah? He comes with, with a Qur'an to his teacher, puts it right in front of him and he says to him, he says, test me. And he doesn't say in English, he says it in Arabic. And as a kid, suddenly knows Arabic. Right? So he says, test me. And, he, and, he, and his teacher looks at him and he thinks, is he having a laugh? You know, those days, you know, the beats were a common thing, right? I think, shall I just like, <laughs> shall I just make spaghetti out of him? You know, like, yeah? So this kid just seems to know. He says, test me. Test me. Any way you want. Yeah? So the teacher says, okay. The Quran's closed. He said, okay, read from the 15th Jews. And the teacher looks at him and thinks, what is, what is happening to this kid? So the, so the teacher, teacher then tests him from another place and another place and another place. And this kid now knows the Quran. And the kid challenges the teacher in speaking Arabic. And is, this kid has got really good Arabic all of a sudden. right? And then, you know, when we heard this, we came over and I, I, I specifically went, you know, met him and I started start talking and he started talking Arabic. Weird. So uh, then we thought, okay, you know, whatever has happened, miracle of God, you know, <laughs> and you wait. Um, what happens is now this kid is acting really weird. Because he goes and he gets a hair clipper 
and he shaves half of his head and he leaves the other hair half as it is takes his hat off walks down the corridor with half of his hair on one side long and the other half is completely shaven now kids are freaking out so then you know the, the teacher grabs hold of him and says well you gotta basically just just shave the other half so the shave the other, the other half so we've done that now and he's acting all weird he's doing things that you know sort of abnormal so he then goes to bed and okay he's gone to bed at about two in the night all these kids there's the six to a room and there's three bunk beds in every single room so there's sort of two on every sort of bunk bed two in the night five of them from that room from his room come running down the corridor yeah banging on the principal's door yeah jin, 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 jin. so the principal gets up so what's the matter jin, 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 jin. and the principal comes in and there's only one kid sleeping it's that one kid the one that shaved his head right the one that knows arabic all of a sudden now yeah he said what's wrong he said, nothing so they go back he said go back go back put the ball in bed come back and he says what's you know, after a little after a little while these kids are screaming back again down the corridor knocking on his door jin, jin, jin. so he said what is it that was happening they go when we go into our bed places yep imagine this guy's name is imran i'm just making i'm not saying his real name yeah imagine his name is imran or something they said that we hear all across the wall something dragging its nails or whatever it is and saying So basically they just 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 obviously leapt out of their beds yeah came straight to the principal now this went on all night yeah <laughs> him taking them to the beds then basically coming back so then the morning came and the main sort of uh, teacher Muhammad Fadr Rahim Sahib, he called him over and I was there serving breakfast now what's common is in, in exorcism is that you would recite something and when you recite it you're able to, when you recite something, you know, some part of the Qur'an, then the jinn gets affected because they can't stand the, the, the Qur'an and then they will like leave. Or they will beg to leave. In this case, this jinn was a believing jinn. And this jinn was a half of the Qur'an. And this jinn knew Arabic. So when the teacher was reciting something on, and you know, trying to recite something to blow on it, the jinn inside the human being was reciting the adverse ayah to break the effect of that it was not any common jinn that was in here and i'm sitting there watching this so the sheikh is reciting and this jinn is undoing whatever recitation is doing and it was you know the sheikh and this other jinn from inside will recite something else so it's undoing whatever the sheikh was saying so after a while, when, they, when the students sort of left the, left the room, I asked the uh, sheikh, the sheikh confirmed that this is what he's doing. And then the sheikh said that the only way to actually get rid of the influence is to take this young boy back to his hometown and to leave him there for one month. He said the reason why this has happened, and you know these guys, <coughs> I'm saying this, that you won't believe in this unless you deal with this. There are certain things that you will not believe in unless you deal with it. So if you've got unbelief in anything I'm saying, I'm saying to you that I'm making a lie witness, whatever I saw, I'm just telling you. You just need to start witnessing some of this yourself and you'll start believing in it. So, the, so the, sheikh, the sheikh himself was able to witness some jinns. And he witnessed a whole group and a family of jinns that had traveled from outside and stayed in that west wing for a month. And he he had this feeling that they were there only for one month. So he said, if this young boy goes to his hometown, then whatever, whatever jinn is, he said there's a young jinn inside him, who's a half of the Qur'an. And if he, stays, if he stays in his hometown, the boy stays in his hometown, then the jinn will automatically leave because his family are leaving this West Wing after a month. So, you know, we took him, we take, we took him home and as we were taking him, my God, we were, I, I was sitting next to him, on the on, on his left hand side in a car he was right in the middle he wanted to he, he was going to open the door when we were going 70 miles an hour he reached to open the the back door 
you know, the car door and the teacher stopped him and the teacher gave him a good shouting and then he basically stayed there until we got to the place uh, we left him in his home for one month after one month he came back and he was the same docile kid you knew looked down while he walked never knew a word of English or Arabic and only knew one juz of the Quran 